Algebra 1, this is 1.4. Today we're going to talk about the distributive property. On the top here, we end up talking about what is the distributive property. There it is. So, it doesn't matter what numbers, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of them can be there. What we can, or any symbol, and what we see is we have like two different versions. The two different versions that we could have, or four if you switch it around, is the fact that A times the quantity of B plus C. So something is on the outside of a quantity T being added or subtracted right below it. It doesn't matter. What matters is that that symbol, variable, number on the outside can be distributed. And remember, we all have distributed before, is that you would, oops, you would have to rainbow that variable in, right? You guys remember that? We've done this before. I know we all have. But what happens is that if I multiply or distribute something from the front, I generally will place it in the front of the variables. If I am multiplying from the back, I put it at the back. Now, we're talking about real numbers. Real numbers are communicable. So therefore, I can switch the order. A times B is B times A. We went over that yesterday or the day before. Not a big deal. Where this really does come into play is matrices. Matrices are multiplied a little differently than just number for number. And so therefore, there would be a difference. So it's kind of good for you to understand where things are is where we're going to keep them, per se. And yes, if there's a positive one, there's a negative one. And it doesn't matter if there's two terms inside or a thousand terms inside. Anything that's on the outside gets distributed all the way to everything. That's the biggest thing. So look at your first example there. What does that equal? We're going to do it two different ways. We're going to go the old school way. Order of operations way tells us to do what? The parentheses. 2 plus 5. So it would be 3 times 7, which is 21. Most of you guys, not a problem. Here's the thing, is that there's more than one way to do math. That's the wonderful thing about it. Is the fact that I could take the 3 and... Yeah, multiply it to the 2 and the 5, we can distribute it. And so, 3 times 2, right? Plus, I go back, draw another rainbow, and it's 3 times 5. Notice the sign in between still stays the same. Yeah, guys, that's showing work. Showing this step right here is showing my work, along with the rainbows. The little bridges. And then you just ask yourself, what's 3 times 2? 3 times 5. Because that's the order of operations. They go first. And 6 plus 15 is 21. Now, you're probably thinking, why would I want to go through four steps when I can do this in basically two? Because sometimes what's inside is not going to stay with just numbers. There very well could be a variable inside. Okay, are there any questions then? So the next one is more of a word problem. It says you've got a group of three adults, an 11-year-old, and two children under the age of 10 years old are going to a baseball game. Write and evaluate an expression to determine the cost of tickets for this group. We got what kind of person ticket is going to be bought and its cost. So therefore, what's the expression? How do I write this? What's my cost going to be, essentially? Cost. I'm going to put cost equals what? What's my cost expression, a.k.a. now it's an equation because i got an equal sign. But what's the cost going to equal? How many adults? There's three adults. What does a 
adult ticket cost. Five dollars. Then we got one eleven year old. How much is that? Three dollars. Okay. And plus how many kiddos? Two kiddos at how much? At three more again? Okay. How many people have got going to this party or this baseball game? Fritz? You know how many people? Eight? How many? Three plus one plus two. It's only six people total, right? Do we get a group rate? No group rate. Okay. How can I put us all together? I could just do three times five, yeah? Get 15? Let's do that. Okay, 15 plus three plus what? Six. Ends up being nine plus, that's $24. Was there a better way of doing this? Maybe using the distributive property? What seems to be in this line right here on every single one? What's up there every single time? Three. Threes. Wait a minute. Three times five plus three times, wait, we said there was how many kids? One. And two times three. Wait a minute. Does that mean that three was in everything? I'm going to erase that bottom line so I can get some room here. So it was three times what? Five plus one plus two. Could I on distribute? Basically factor that. But is that the same thing? Are those two statements equivalent? They're equivalent statements? Expressions? Because if I go and distribute through, I get the top line. So then wait a minute. What's using my order of operations then? What's five plus one plus Two and three times eight is twenty-four. We just did that problem two different ways. Got the same answer. One, we used the distributive property, one we did not. Use the distributive property then and mental math, evaluate this thing. So seven times forty-nine. How can I multiply 7 times 49 without a calculator efficiently? Yeah. Um, maybe 7 distributed to 7 times 7. Okay. We could, we could say 7 times 7 times 7. But we'd still have to know 7 times 7, which is 49, times 7. That could get a little tricky. Okay. Chuck's saying, could I do this? Would that be okay? Could I split 40 into two numbers that I know? 40 and 9. 40 plus 9 is 49. Do I, can I multiply 7 times 40? Is that a little bit easier? What's 7 times 4? Add the 0, right? So that's 280. Plus what's 7 times 9? What's 7 times 9 now? Can you add 280 plus 63? Which ends up being? 343. Now is that the only way to do that particular problem? No, Fritz. Um, 
right, we could switch this 9 and the 40 around. Remember, addition is commutative, right? So I can switch the order. What's a different set of numbers? What else makes 49? 7 probably won't split up because I want it. 49 doesn't look very nice. It's a big number. 220s would only make 40. And a 9. So I could split this up a whole bunch of times, right? 20, 20, and a 9. In this case, I would distribute, right, the 7 through. That'll work, too. Is that 7 times 49? What's 7 times 5 add a 0? 350 minus 7. 343. Guys, I probably wouldn't split it up into three numbers, but two numbers would make this more efficient. Okay? Let's try a different one. I'm going to erase these. Let's try 304 times 15. I'll give you guys a couple seconds. What numbers do I want to split? Which one? Do I want to split 15? No. Nah, let's split 300. 300 to what? What do you want? What do you want to split 300 to? Or 304 to? I don't... You could do three 100s and a plus 4. I agree. I don't know if I'd want to do that much. What about just 300 plus 4 and I'll leave 15 on the outside. Because remember, I'll use my rules of 10 to say, I really have to worry about is 15 times 3, which is 15 times 3, guys. 45, tack on the two zeros to get 4,500. And then what's 4 times 15? So the answer is? Four, five, six, zero, or four thousand five hundred sixty. It's not so bad, right? The next one could get a little tricky because I got fifty-two, which is not necessarily a nice number, and I have seventeen, which is not such a nice number. Which one do you want to change? Seventeen or a fifty-two? Could we technically change both? Yes. You technically can. We don't know the rule for multiplying when both of them are two separate things. But some of us might. Let's try fifty-two times. Twenty minus three, that work. Ten plus seven, that'll work. What's fifty-two times two? Add a zero. One o four zero, right? And then minus fifty-two times three. Wait a minute, that almost in itself, watch, would be this, right? No. If I wanted to do a little bit more work, I'm going to put a bracket around this so we know we're subtracting it. But couldn't that also be 50 plus 2 times 3? And couldn't I just distribute again? I think we could. So it would be 1040 zero, zero, minus, what's 50 times 3? Plus? So it's 1040 minus 156. And I think you guys could handle that, right? It's 156. So 156. Subtract. Using mental math, maybe using your paper. I can't do that. Add a 1. So we got 4. 
And then all of a sudden be like, oh man, I can't do that. So I gotta go here, make this a 10, make that a nine, make this a 13, which then equals eight. eight. And then, eight. so 884. And we're happy. Okay, now this one, these ones are kind of what I was talking about earlier, that it's not going to just be numbers. They're going to be so that you have to use the distributive property to simplify it, as in to expand it. So it wants you to rewrite using the distributive property. I've got a 7 outside of 3w minus 5. All that means is take the 7 and distribute it in. So... 7 gets multiplied to 3w. What's 7 times 3w? 21w. I go back and distribute 7 times negative 5. Negative 35. Now wait, guys. Maybe we're not at this point yet. We should have actually wrote this. And we cannot divide by anything. 21w minus 35 is the answer. We don't know what w is. There's no equal sign, so yeah, we're done. Okay? So technically, I should have wrote this first, which led us to this. I'll show that step here with the 4 on the outside of 6v squared plus v minus 3. 4 times 6v squared. Twenty-four. Oops, sorry. I'm supposed to write that out. Six v squared times four plus v times four minus three times four, which then yes equals twenty-four v squared plus four v minus. See guys, notice that I did not change the exponents on v and v squared or even w. They went along for the ride. So, to answer the question that was just answered, could we add those v's and v squares together? It's no, because they are not like terms. To be like terms, it has to have the same variable. Same variable and exponent. So it's not enough just to say, hey, they're both v's. That means I can put them together. One is v squared, one was v. They're not the same. Because, guys, remember, a variable stands for a number. Is 2 squared the same thing as 2? No. So therefore, they're not like terms. You can't group them together that way. Simplest form, guys. Simplest form is gathering up all like terms. And that's usually after you apply any kind of distributive property, multiplication, all of that, is that you put things into standard form, highest to lowest exponent, or group them together all the A's together, the B's and C's and whatever they are. Guys, the coefficient, what's a coefficient? Luke? No, 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 not coefficient. Look here, the coefficient on U is 17. The coefficient on uh, this U is 25. The coefficient here on T squared is 1. On t, it is 3. This one is negative 1. Coefficients are what, Park? The what? Yeah. We're going to say it's the number in front of variable. Number in front of a variable, including the constant. So all the way over here at 3, 3 is considered a coefficient. It's the constant coefficient. never changes. 
Okay? So, I want to combine like terms. Simplify. Group everything together that I can. Hey, wait a minute. If I have 25 of something plus another, uh, 17 of something plus 25 of the same exact thing, how many do I have? Forty-two views. Let's add them together. You can only add things together that have the same variable and the same exponent or power. So if you go to B, which ones are the like terms? Three t and a minus t. So t squared's got to go along for the ride. What's 3 of something minus 1 of something? A positive 2 of something, right? Can everybody kind of see that? Now, there does not necessarily have to be like terms. So in the last one, there might not be, or any of these, there might not be like terms. But do we have any like terms? We do. I can put the a's together, and I can put the constants together. Now, guys, I don't have it up here. Maybe we should put up here standard form. Standard form is highest to lowest, whoops, lowest powers especially when they're all in the same variable. I always want to start off with the one that has the highest exponent. Which one has the highest exponent? The 6a squared. So it's a negative 6a squared. And then I'm going to go to the next one, which would be a. I have seven of them, and I'm going to take away two of them. How many do I have? I have five of them, and them we're talking about is a's. And four plus three, seven. You're good to go. The last two questions I want you guys to do is I want you first to write the algebraic expression for twice the difference of three x and y increased by five times the sum of x and two y. What we have here is twice the difference. Wait a minute, what's the difference again? Subtracting. Subtracting what? 3x and y. So what does that look like? What does the difference of 3x and y look like? It's 3x minus y. Correct. So 3x minus y. And there's something about that group. We are twice the size. Which means on the outside of it, it needs to have a 2. And then it says this thing is increased by. I'll add five times a different quantity of what? The sum. What's the sum mean? X plus it's add, so x plus 2y. That was part A. Part B says simplify it. That means gather up like terms. Expand it out, gather it up. Which means I need to do what with the 2 and the 5? No. Distribute both of them separately. 2 times 3x? 6x. Two times negative y. Negative 2y. Five times x. Five times uh, 2y. And now you just have to gather up like terms. Guys, this one doesn't necessarily have any powers, so they have x's first in the top, so we'll just start with the x's. Do we have like terms there? So that makes 11x, and now we'll put the y's together, negative 2 of them plus 10 of them, plus 8y. And that is it for today. Homework on 1.4 is page 29, 11 through 52, every 3. Have a great day.